Hello and welcome to Catherine K Designs. Today I'm going to show you how to make your own piece of artwork using a quote. and this is everything you'll need. I'm actually going to take the quote that I want to put in and I'll show you a little bit of the process. So, here is, here is the frame. Here is the watercolor paper in there. So I'll get a good idea. Now, I want to use the rule of thirds so about one third here, one third is there. So I want the top of the quote to be about there and a little bit off of the edges. So I went into Word and simply played around with uh, the quote I liked and different sizes of font. The actual font I used is called Script MT Bold. I think it was uh, 150 points, but I'll show you. So I played around, this is 150, that's the largest, or this, nope, that is one. 30 points. That is a nice... Actually, I'll flip it around for, for you to see the difference. Here we go. So this is a nice, right around where I want it to be. One third. It doesn't... It's got a lot of nice negative space there. Maybe I'll push it out, keeping in mind that it's actually going to be here and not where the paper is. So that's the, one of the sizes I liked. This is the biggest one, which is nice as well. And then here we go. This one is just too small. I found for the size of the frame and the size of the piece of artwork we're doing, this was too small. So that's a bit of my process. I just simply have cut sheets of paper and I taped it all together. That's why you need the tape. And between these two, This one and this one, I think I'm going to go with the bigger one. So this is 150 point script MT bold. And this is where the carbon paper is important. So I have my carbon paper. I'll just take out a sheet for you to see. I bought this carbon paper, I think 10 years ago, and I still haven't gone through it, through it but I always find really good uses for it. So it has black side on one side, the light side on the other. You trace on here and it'll leave a mark on the watercolor paper. It's important to do this before because once you wet the paper, it's harder to do, it's stapled on the board, it's harder to move around. So you want to do this before. So I'm going to make sure that the carbon paper covers everywhere that I want. I'm probably gonna have to use three pieces. And you can reuse one piece several times. I mean, you're just, you're not gonna use it up. So, let me just see here. Here we go. So, to trace, again, mechanical pencil, it's my personal preference, that's what I like. And you take the outside and inside of the quote and you trace it out. And once you're done, you're going to have this on your watercolor paper.
Here it is, I completely submerged it in water. You can see it's floating around in there just in my bathtub because I had no other container to put it in. And the pencil won't come off. That's the great thing. So you let it sit in there for four or five minutes and then we're gonna take it out and put it on a piece of paper towel or a towel itself. There it is, I just took it out of the bathtub. It's gonna kind of wipe it off. Now, we are ready to staple it. So you put it on your piece of wood or masonite or whatever it is. And you staple it. So this is going to be the line of the, um, the passepartout. So I want to actually, you're going to cut it off where the staples are. So I'm going to create it wider. And this is called is really called stretching the paper. So here we go. It's frisket time. So this is it. Frisket or drying gum. It's something you use to block out the letters so that you can paint it over and it won't go inside the letters, which I'll fill in with something else after probably. But this is a great tool. It dries fast though, so that is something you gotta watch out. So I'm just gonna take, I have a bunch of these paint brushes and I'm literally just gonna paint in the quote. But you gotta work it a little fast. And I prefer the blue one because when it dries, uh, you could see it, whereas there's white ones. Once they dry, you can't even tell where it went. Whereas the blue one is nice. And then after, we'll take it off with this magic pickup eraser. You know, if you wanted to actually, I'm gonna probably keep the, the quote white, I'm not sure. But you could probably skip this step if you wanted to just fill them in black with um, a marker or something over the watercolor, then you don't really need to do this. But I'm just showing another option, depending on what you want to do. Here we are at the fun part! We get to paint it. We can see that the frisket has dried. It's a little bit shiny. I don't know if you can see that, but we'll be taking that off after we paint. So this little line is the area that we want to paint over because that's where our frame goes. And you can see when it dried, see how it's ripped the paper? It's, it's shrank back that so much. Now, what you will need for this step is your watercolor paintbrushes, the actual watercolor, some water, and maybe a paper towel just for you. Now, I also have this larger brush because I might do bigger washes of color. Now here's the fun thing. You can do whatever you want with this. You can use whatever colors, and the great thing about watercolor is that even if you put it on and you don't like it, all you have to do is add some water to dilute it, blot it out, and you can restart. It's very forgiving that way. So, I have decided for my space, I'm gonna do more of a blue, blue tones, blues and purple, blues and purple. So I'm gonna keep it in an analogous color scheme. I'm gonna talk about this in a different video, this color wheel and complementary colors and triads and all that sort of stuff. But basically I'm gonna keep it within the same range of colors, blues and purples, uh, because I have a lot of blue in my living room and I think that I don't wanna have this more in the red tones, which is another color that I have. So let us just experiment away. I have two sets of watercolors. 
this one. I've had them both forever. I think at least 20 years. Somebody just gave them to me as a kid and I've kept them. So these are the two. It doesn't really matter. They're both the same thing. I'll actually start by just putting that aside and just kind of wetting the paper because I want to have more of a, a wash on here first. So the wash is going to just spread everywhere and the more wet it is, the more it's just going to spread. Let's put lots of water on there. We're going to, it's like re-wetting the paper. And you can layer watercolors, which is really great. I mean, there's it, watercolor is so versatile. I don't use it that often, but uh, when I do, I love playing with it. Seen some really beautiful watercolor renderings of interiors, which give it a nice kind of uh, romantic quality to this to the renders. So even with this, let's start. Let's see this blue. Maybe this blue. Let's see. See how it's just going to. Be very diluted. That's kind of what I want. upside down because it doesn't really matter which side you do it. It's more uh, actually might end up better if I'm painting upside down and this is the other side. It just gives you a different perspective. This is fun part number three. So I love this because you take your little gum eraser that goes with the drawing gum. And now we get to take this frisk it off. So all you do is erase like you would any other eraser. And it just, ooh, it all peels off. There we go. So here it is. You get to choose whether you want to leave it like this or you want to fill it in. I've decided I'm going to actually fill in this part with this paint marker, a Liquitex paint marker. This thing is amazing. I used it on another painting I did last time and it's an acrylic paint inside of the marker. Fantastic. I've done a little couple of tests here. It's really fun to use, easy to use, and it'll fill it in nicely because I want to have these sharp edges.
part is done. Now we can just cut off the paper from the board. I'm gonna cut it as close as I can to these staples. Here we are at the next step. We're gonna be putting the artwork in the frame. Now you grab your passepartout and make sure, usually they have a, an edge, so make sure that's pointing on the right side. And I could still see the faint pencil mark of the outline I had done before. So I can grab that and usually what I like to do is I take a piece of tape, bottom or top, it doesn't matter, and I I put it on there, on the on the piece of artwork so the sticky side is sticking up so that when I place it it's kind of around there I just stick it down on that part and I hold it and flip it around so, oh, flip it around so now I could tape it down here. Okay, so let me just have a look before and make sure it's straight. And it is. So I simply put it in. Dun, 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 dun. So that's it, really simple piece that you can do. And the great thing about this is you don't have to use watercolor. You can use that technique with ink if you wanted to. You could keep the background white and just do this in black. And the carbon paper trick works with any font that you find online. There are so many out there, you can pay $5 for a really nice one if you wanted to. I just use the ones that came with Word. Thank you so much for watching Catherine K Designs. If you haven't already, please subscribe below and I'll see you on the next video.